Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Brother Gubba coming to you regarding the subject of headship. There is a subject in the, uh, many churches that is really false doctrine, and the concept is called headship. A lot of preachers are telling the body of Christ that they are the local church's head, and this is not true. In 1 Corinthians 11, chapter verse 3, it says, in the English Standard Version, it says, But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. So actually, there are only three headships in the Bible, God, Jesus Christ, and the husband. And that is reaffirmed in Ephesians 5.23, which says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. I repeat, there are only three headships in the Bible, God, Jesus Christ, and the husband, according to 1 Corinthians 11.3 and Ephesians 5.23. Now, there are other scriptures regarding headship saying that Jesus Christ is the head of his church, which is found in Ephesians 1.22, Ephesians 4.15. I've already read to you Ephesians 5.23, also Colossians 1.18 and Colossians 2.19. Now, the concept of headship is really taught that when you join a particular uh, church, you are taught that the anointing and blessings of God on your life flows from being submitted to your pastor of that church. Your pastor is considered your spiritual headship. For example, if you have some problem in your life, you are told to go and talk to your headship because you are taught that your headship, which is your pastor, is especially equipped to hear God's voice and direction for your life. The only problem with that is that the headship doctrine is not found in scriptures. It is not God, Jesus, pastor, and husband. It is only God, Jesus, and the husband. Also, Many people are taught that the pastor is their covering, which is also uh, not scriptural. I remember when I left a church back in February of 2005, and one of the church members who is no longer there herself told me, she said, Brother Glover, you know you need a covering. And I just uh, burst out and started laughing because I knew that concept was not scriptural. That was first taught in the middle of the 70s by uh, three preachers. One of those preachers later denounced that concept as false doctrine because that heresy began to spread throughout those churches and they began to do all kind of strange concepts regarding the concept of headship. Now, um, the concept of headship is not scripture. And what they do, they take um, 1 Corinthians 11 chapter out of context again. The only head, the only head coverings, rather, the only head coverings in the Bible is found uh, in 1 Corinthians 11 chapter regarding a wife covering her head uh, in the church. Now, the scripture says there is only one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is your mediator. Jesus Christ is our head. Jesus Christ is our uh, Lord and Savior, not pastor, not apostle, not bishop. The concept of headship that is taught by many preachers is, is a lie. In many of these churches, they are taught that when God's blessing flows uh because upon the church, it flows from being submitted to the pastor down. It flows from the pastor first, then it flows down to the congregation. That is false doctrine. I remember even preachers teaching that. I remember hearing a preacher saying that he's going to be a billionaire, and how many people are going to go with him? And everybody began to holler and scream, say, amen. Only problem is that it's not going to happen. People, that is false doctrine. A lot of people are so caught up in these preachers, these apostles, and these pastors, that they actually believe anything these preachers say. People, it is false doctrine. You are submitted to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is your head, not the pastor. Now, there's another concept um, that is also false. Many uh, preachers are actually not only usurping the authority of Jesus Christ, they also are usurping the authority of the husbands. Many times if a husband tries to have a Bible study in his home and he says something that is totally different than what the pastor says, many times the wife may argue with him. Yes, I know. I pastored myself uh, many years ago. These uh, the, many of these women are, are caught up emotionally in these pastors. For example, if a husband and wife marry and he belongs to one church and the pastor belongs to another church, she will not join her husband's church. Her husband will join her church. And the reason is because not only is she um, em she's em intellectually and emotionally caught up in that, in, in that uh, preacher. So, and what happened with that, when that husband have a Bible study in his home, and he says something that may be totally different than what the pastor says, 
His wife will argue with him. She will tell him that you don't like pastor while you saying those things, while you disagree with my pastor, you don't love him. But if the pastor says anything, quote any scripture out of order, she will simply smile, drop her head, and take notes. The pastor is more powerful than her husband. God bless you.